Hey guys, Society Reviews here, my review of the film A Quiet Place Day One. The Quiet Place franchise has had quite the rise over the last couple of years. John Krasinski wrote and directed the first two films, which were about a family trying to survive the Earth after it was overtaken by a group of extraterrestrial monsters that hunt not by sight, but by sound. The rules of this universe is very simple. You make a sound, you die. The first two films were able to showcase Krasinski's talents as a writer and a director and highlight his wife Emily Blunt's acting ability that showcased her as a mother desperate to keep her family alive. Believe it or not, there was a time not too long ago people criticized these movies for being too pro-family, too pro-gun, and being too pro-life. So for the third movie, Paramount Pictures decided they were going to remove all three of these elements from the story and shift the focus from a completely different city with a completely different protagonist. Take away the guns, take away the family, and take away a protagonist that actually wants to live, and you have the third installment of this franchise entitled A Quiet Place Day One. Set in New York City, the day giant meteors fell from the sky and brought upon the world horrific-looking creatures that killed by sound, a terminally ill cancer patient named Sam is struggling to live out her final days with any real motivation. Even as the world around her begins to rapidly end, the only thing that motivates her to keep going is to get one last slice of New York pizza, and it doesn't matter if she has to survive the apocalypse in order to get it. As Sam tries to survive the elements, she meets a law student named Eric who is all alone and looking for someone to survive with. Eric and Sam decide to team up and figure out a way to escape Manhattan, a city that is swarmed by monsters, but the only thing that offers them an advantage is being in the elements of a giant loud city. Sadly for fans of this franchise, Day One is a quiet place movie in name only. John Kaczynski is not back as writer or director for this film, neither is Emily Blunt back to sell this film from her character perspective. So what you're left with is a movie that is a shell of itself in many ways. Lupita Nyong'o's last opportunity in the realm of horror came in the Jordan Peele film, Us. Fast forward to day one and Lupita plays a woman who portrays a very nihilistic mindset and knows that she's going to die due to her illness. With her time being very limited, her means of survival is not the top of her priority list even though the world around her is crumbling at the seams. Day One makes us feel sympathy for the character, whose best case scenario is she doesn't have much time left. The problem with this is that if the main character doesn't care about her own survival, why should the audience? The acting was the strongest aspect of the first two movies after Emily Blunt set a very high standard being the woman at the helm of those films. Character building was a huge plus for those films as we experienced multiple characters overcoming self-doubt and depression in order to aid those who were close to them. But in this film, that plan goes right out the window. Outside the character of Sam, the film only gives us a handful of characters to begin with. A film that has its biggest setting ever being in the city of New York gives us the least amount of character development possible. On one hand, we're introduced to the character of Ruben, who is Sam's caretaker that we briefly see in the first act of the movie before he's snatched away without giving us much to go off of. When Ruben is taken out of the movie, he's later replaced by the character of Eric, who suffers from being a needy and effeminate excuse of a man. Michael Sinarski is responsible for writing and directing this film, and his only prior cinematic experience was the Nicolas Cage film of 2021 entitled Pig. Without saying much, there's a noticeable drop-off in quality across the board for this movie when put up against the movies that preceded it. The film suffers from an intense amount of character-induced stupidity. Our surviving characters make decisions that are devoid of any common sense, even in a horror setting. For example, at the midway point of this film, a giant rainstorm swallows New York City, allowing the characters to move around with a bit more freedom. As the rain and the thunder suppress the individual noise that they will create moving around, what do our characters decide to do with this opportunity? Return home to her apartment and fall asleep until the storm is over. Why would our character decide to make a decision like this? because the plot requires it to. There's no way around it. A Quiet Place Day One is easily the worst film in this franchise thus far that proves the age old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I give this film a one and a half out of five.